with our opening hymn, number 706, We Come With Joy, number 706. of you who are here, to those of you who are out there, we come together to put ourselves into God's presence and we begin as always in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And also with you. This morning as we begin with our reconciliation part of the service, there's something I read that I actually wrote down because it was so meaningful. As we confess our faults, I want us to think about this. If being a Christian was a capital offense, would the court find enough witnesses against us? Think about it as we confess our faults. Brother Jesus, you are the Son of God and the author of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, for the times of our selfishness, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Brother Jesus, you comfort us. You give us hope. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life which is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Son. Take away the sin of the world. 
Before we listen to the words of the opening prayer, I want to acknowledge our dear brother, Bill Raftery, who passed away yesterday. Paul, his partner, is here. His two daughters and his son are here. And to all of you, on behalf of all of us, our deepest sympathy. We'll miss seeing that veteran's hat. Let us pray. God of the universe, we worship you as Lord. God ever close to us, we call you our creator. From this world's uncertainty, we look to the covenant. We ask you to keep us in peace, to keep us secure in your life. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let our, our minds and hearts be open as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Yes, I hear the whispering of many. Terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce Jeremiah. All those who were my friends are watching for any misstep. They say, perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But our God is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable disgrace. O oh God of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you, I have entrusted my cause. Sing to our God, praise our God, for our God has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord. Let all the earth cry out in joy to the Lord.
from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one person, and through sin, death, and thus death has spread through the whole human race because all have sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all, from our first parents to Moses. Even though their sin, unlike that of our first parents, was not a matter of breaking the law. But the gift is not like the offense. For if by the offense of the first human all died, much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of Jesus Christ abound for all. The word of God. Thank you, Lord. said to the apostles, do not let people intimidate you. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, and nothing is hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in darkness, speak in the light. What you hear in private, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who deprive the body, but cannot destroy the soul. Rather fear the one who can destroy both body and soul in Gehenna. Are not sparrows sold for next to nothing? Yet not a single sparrow falls to the ground without God's knowledge. As for you, every hair of your head has been counted. So don't be afraid of anything. You are worth more than an entire flock of sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others I will acknowledge before God, and whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before God. And this, my brothers and sisters, is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Father. uh, happy Father's Day to those who uh, are fathers here in our community um, and also is watching us uh, via uh, media. Facebook. Facebook. 
People say, oh, well, go on your computer and say, look, I said, I'm old. I went to school with a pen and paper and a number two yellow pencil. I said, I don't know computers. Um, I'm lucky I can do what I can do, but it's be that in the way. Uh, it, it is a special day for all of us because we've all had fathers, and we all have different relationships with our fathers. We have different memories of who our fathers were and what they did for us. Some were blessings, some not so much. But reality is when uh, you are re responsible for a young person in your life, a baby comes into your life, that is a, it's a blessing, it's an honor, but it's a challenge. As a friend of mine said, Vinny, babies don't come with a set of instructions. <laughs> and um, that is so true. And as I tell my nieces and nephews that have babies, one day they're gonna make their own decision. And it may not be exactly the decision that you think is best for them. But be that as it may, let us move on. <coughs> it's an interesting gospel that we hear today because there seems to be a lot of secrecy. And we love secrets. Um, one of, the, one of the things we all love to do as much as we would deny it is we love to gossip. There's an old saying, people get around the table, sip coffee and dish dirt. Um, and, and many times we find ourselves doing that. We get on the phone, the first thing we say is, guess what I heard? <laughs> guess what happened? Guess who called me? And so the guessing game goes on until you say, okay, fine. You know, I've named 14 people now. Uh, what, what, what's, what's the point of all this? And then so-and-so called me, get out of town. Yeah, yeah, shut up. Shut the front door. We make all these different <laughs> expressions. But we're, we're saying, you know, okay, fine now. What are the details? Uh, many times people will say, well, I have, I have a... I, I, I saw somebody and they said, well, how, what's going on? Uh, I don't remember. You don't remember? Then what are you doing telling me if you're gonna leave out the best parts because you don't remember? Take notes the next time. You know? <laughs> um, but Jesus is saying to the disciples that there are things that are secret now, but they're going to be yelled from the housetops. They're going to be made known. And what are those secrets? Jesus said, what I tell you in secret, proclaim openly. And what is that secret? Well, there is really nothing in the scriptures that I ever read that said, and this is the secret that Jesus had. And so it's assumed that Jesus is talking about the secret, the good news. It's a secret which Jesus attempted to get his disciples to understand. And sometimes they got it, but a lot of times they didn't. And they would sit together, and I'm sure that they would, of an evening as Jesus is off praying, say, what in the world is going on? What did he mean by? What does he expect us to do? And where in the world are we going? I read something long ago in regards to Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. And we look on him as the traitor, as the one who went off and hung himself and his bowels split asunder, as the old uh, version of the Vulgate would say. But I just wonder if it was because of the fact that Judas didn't understand where Jesus was going. And he was beginning to get the feeling, given the, the times that they were in, the relationship between the Romans and the Jews, the rise of the zealot party that wanted to overthrow Rome, 
I think Judas did what he did because he was afraid. He was afraid that things would come down on the disciples and they would all be put to death. Just a thought. Getting back to the secret. As I thought on my way down here and I began to, to ponder these words of, of what Jesus said today in the gospel, I couldn't help but think, you know, uh, as good as we are, we all have skeletons in our closet. Every single one of us. And I heard it said, if you have a skeleton in your closet, oh, what the hell, rattle it once in a while. <laughs> so that people know it's there. But I think the secret that Jesus was saying today in this gospel story, and it's appropriate that it should come on Father's Day, is that the Father loves us. The Father cares about us. The Father is not this created being somewhere far away. The Father is not some awful God that demands sacrifice day after day after day, countless sheep and oxen being slain and offered on the altar in the temple. Even in the Old Testament, the prophet said that God found the smell appalling smell of their sacrifices. He said, rent your hearts. Sacrifice your heart. That's the sacrifice that I demand. So the sacrifice and the love that the Father has for us is the secret that Jesus told the disciples. Now, we don't read that in every single gospel story, but we surely read it a lot in the Gospel of John. I and the Father are one. I am in the Father. The Father is in me. I am in you. And you are in me. And if Jesus is in us, then the Father is in us, because there's no dividing the Trinity. We can't say that Jesus is present on the cross without the Father and the Holy Spirit being present as well. We can't say that Jesus is on our altar today without having the Father and the Spirit as well. When Jesus said, when two or more are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them, so is the Father and the Holy Spirit. And I think that's the secret that Jesus wanted the disciples to tell from the housetops that our God is a God of love and of mercy. That we can give up all the sacrificing of animals in the temple. We can give up these thoughts that God is some far of power that in a moment's notice can crush us and annihilate us and allow our enemies to overpower us and take us as captives. God is a father. And whatever or however we can define that term, God is the perfect father. He is the one who created us. He and the son, the word, was together in creation. And as the prologue in John's Gospel says, the Word was with God and all things were created for Him and in Him. And without Him, nothing was created. And so today, we celebrate Father's Day. We remember those who were in our lives that may not be there anymore but surely their memories are. We may be blessed by having our fathers with us yet. 
and we celebrate that reality. But somewhere along the line, a person said yes to our being, brought us into this life, and helped us become who we are today. Were there mistakes made? Oh yes. For as I said before, we don't come with a set of instructions. But we know that God is that perfect Father who is with us in a moment's notice, to take our hand when we falter, to give us answer to the questions that we need to be answered, and to give us the ability to become the people that he has created us to be. Not necessarily the people that we want to be, but the people he created us to be. Sometimes we may wonder why God made us the way we are. And I read some answer to that a while back in a book. It said, God created you the way you are because he wanted to create the best, the best son or daughter that he could ever create. And that was you. That is you. And that is me. Happy Father's Day, <coughs> Father. I invite you to stand as you are able. Would you please turn to number 143 to recite the creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the mind of fire, was crucified by our death. He descended into the dead. place our gifts on the altar, we place our prayers, especially the prayers and the quietness of our hearts. Our response is, we walk in your light. We walk, we walk in your light. light. During this time of unrest and discord in our country, let us be strong in our faith and proclaim by our lives the good news of peace and reconciliation. We raise our prayer. We we walk walk in your life. Life. As we celebrate Father's Day, let us give thanks to God for giving us those who mentored and guided us in our yearning years. We raise our prayer. For our Catholic Apostolic Church in North America, sister parishes and missions, that God will strengthen our resolve to work for the betterment of those who are on the fringe of society, as did St. Charles of Brazil. We raise our prayer. We walk in the light. May there be an end to any type of exclusion due to racism, gender issues, nationality, or religious prejudice, we raise our prayer. We will walk in your life. For our parish members, in gratitude for your continued support, we raise our prayer. We will walk in your life. Let us pray for those who labor to find a vaccine that will put an end to the virus and a quick cure for those who are suffering because of it. We raise our prayer. We will all in your light. For our country and our elected representatives, for those who serve in the military, and for the less fortunate than we, we raise our prayer. We will all in your light. For those who are suffering from the virus, 
and for those who are caring for them, and for others who are ill of mind, body, or spirit, especially Estelle, Rose, Tyler, Robbie, Lucille, Javiera, Raul Sanchez, Joyce and Bill, Bishop Carl, Walter, and the staff and patients at Memorial Pembroke and the Court of Palm Air, we raise our prayer for all those who have died, that they rest in peace, and those who mourn them find comfort, especially our Bill Raftery, Gerald Lancer, Gerard Lancer, and all our departed fathers. May they rest in peace. What else should we pray for? For Tyler Snyder and his family and his new daughter that was born the other day, Addison Snyder, wishing Tyler a uh, happy new father. For my new nephew, James Pio Riggio, and his parents and our family, and for my father and Paul, Claire, and I and Billy. We want to Father in God, we place our prayers before you with the confidence that you will answer them in your own way, in your own time because to make the name of your beloved Christ, now and always. Amen. 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 Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Please join us with our offertory hymn, number 694, We Have Been Told, number 694.
My brothers and sisters, let us pray that these our gifts might be acceptable to God, our living creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of your name. Loving God, receive our gifts, purify us in mind and heart, and always eager to serve, always make us eager to serve you as we serve one another. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 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 And now let us give thanks. God, our Creator. Right. Oh, powerful and ever living God, we do well always and every way to give you thanks through Jesus, your beloved. We see your infinite power in the loving plan of salvation. You came to our rescue by your power as God, but you wanted us to be saved by one like us. We refuse your friendship, but we ourselves. Restored it through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and the saints and all of our ancestors in faith, we praise you, loving God, as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Spirit come upon these gifts and upon us that we in vain may become the body and blood of Jesus, your beloved. The night when Jesus was betrayed, when he was at supper with his friends, he took bread. He prayed a blessing, he broke the bread and passed it to them and said, Take this, all of you, eat. This is my body, which will be given up. When supper was ended, Jesus took a cup of wine. Again, he prayed a blessing, and he passed the cup around the table, and he said to them, Take this, all of you drink. This is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins will be forgiven. And whenever you do this, remember me. Let us proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come. life-giving bread to save each other. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Loving God, remember the church throughout the world, especially this parish family of Saints Francis and Claire, no matter where we are. Make us grow in love with all of our bishops and the five patriarchs of the Apostolic Church with Anthony and Michael, our bishops, and the men and women who lead the other churches, temples, synagogues, and mosques. And remember Bill, whom you have called from this life. In baptism, he died with Christ. May he also share in his resurrection. And have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, 
with the apostles and Marty's, with Francis and Claire, with John the 23rd, with Charles of Brazil, and all the saints. We praise you. We give you glory. Through Christ, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O loving God, our Creator, forever and ever. to say the words that Jesus taught us, the family prayer, and to remember all families who are separated for whatever reason. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace today. In your mercy, keep us free from all things that will hurt us as we wait in joyful anticipation the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus, Lord, is risen. Let the dead rise. condemnation but health of mind and heart. <clears throat> this is Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Mary, who called you and me to walk in God's life. Happy are we who are called to share in this meal. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, you, but you have said the word, and I have given you. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Table set, Jesus calls us. Come. This is and you are not the This is and you are the This is and you are the
And so, may we live justly as God lives and let us pray. Loving God, you renew your life within us. In your mercy, assure our redemption and bring us to eternal life. And this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord is with you. And also with you. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you and all those whom you love. Let us go from here, my brothers and sisters, and the comfort we have received, the body of Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please join us with our closing hymn number 547, Father, We Thank Thee Who Has Planted, number 547. Francis and Claire, pray for us. Joseph, pray for us.